I'm addicted to it, too. That's why I'm here each and every week giving you the latest and the greatest with all our guests across the country. And uh, tonight won't be any different. Uh, my guest tonight is a dynamic entertainer, speaker, producer, writer, author, and game-changing trendsetter that aims to inspire. She's migrated from Trinidad and Tobago in her late teens to establish a new legacy for her life. And she's the author of the phenomenal book, Let That Bloop, 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 Man Go. Five Plus Steps to Getting Over a Breakup. And she is here to talk about relationships right now in our 101. Miss Francois. <laughs> I love that introduction. I sung extra amazing, and I'm already amazing. Hello, Mr. Finch. Listen, with that accent, you are above amazing. <laughs> and it is the 10 sexiest accents in the world, actually. Thank you. How we get it to number one? Uh, as I t just keep talking to me. It'll get to number one. Oh, look at you. <laughs> All right. What you doing later on? Okay, never mind. 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 <laughs> All right, so today we're talking about relationship, one of the most popular subjects across the country to discuss. And why do you think relationships are such a hot button topic for people? Let's let's be real. You as soon as we got on, you already was talking about how sexy my my accent was, right? I did not so, say I did not use the term sexy. Okay, I did not did not oh, use I'm, those terms. I'm trying to help you help you. Okay. <laughs> But re relationships, I mean, first of all, relationships is everywhere. That's with man, woman, your family, relationships is everywhere. So obviously it's the most dominant thing and we can't get anywhere by ourselves. So we always need to network and have relationships. Some of those relationships just comes with some heartache and stress. Okay, a little heartache and stress. So let's talk <laughs> about this book you wrote. Um, because I want to have, well, first of all, tell, tell the listening audience and the watching audience what the title of this book is. Let that beep man go. Cause what's I, the beep? What's the beep? Uh, again, so I don't know if I could curse on the show. I'm not, you know, what's hilarious. Yeah, you can curse on this show. I don't even curse, but it most people when you read it, it have those signs in the middle. So it's let that fucking man go. Oh, or, <laughs> But what I like to say is it doesn't necessarily have to mean that for everyone. Because I always say when you just get out of a relationship, you're not happy. You're sad, you're yeah. depressed, you're confused, whatever the case might be. So that, that word or those signs in the middle could be anything, whatever it wants to mean for you. But it's just to like get out some frustration. So let that uh, man go. Okay. Now, why do you think people hold on to people that they should let go because i would think if you're letting someone go and in your case this book i'm, I'm assuming is geared towards women because you're talking about letting the man go why do you think <laughs> so many women hold on to men in, in relationship that's obviously not good for them well one thing for me because most of these things was based on my experience besides some of my friends is that right I Right, but I say this: what with anything in life, if I put in an investment, I should get returns. So That's one of the right. reasons is you invested so much time, and it got mentally, physically, emotionally. I want to get some returns. So sometimes we keep holding on, hoping things will get better. And also, it's a comfort level. This is what you know, and you've known it for ten years, twelve years, six months. This is what you're accustomed to. So now I have to start over from scratch. Mm. Okay, I see. Look, I, I'm all passionate. I'm already frustrated. <laughs> <laughs> hey, how long ago was that relationship? Okay, let's talk about I'm that. All right. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds fresh. <laughs> uh, okay, so so you feel you should get something for the investment. Now that sounds that's like saying, that's what I'm saying. That how a lot of people, a lot of different reasons why people hold on to relationships. Sometimes you you put in a lot into it, so you just want to hold on as long as possible. OK, now, now, do you think that make it sounds like it's more about the investment versus the investor? No, it's in the investment. OK, so, so in, in that with that concept, how accountable is the investor in picking and choosing the investment? 
Oh my God. What is this? A finance class? Hey. <laughs> you said you need to get something back from your investment in the in the man. Because at this point, you have to let the fucking man go. And I was just wanting to know when we talk about investment, because you, you, we talk about people we mess time, money, right. we add miles on our peen or our vagina. So that's a that's a healthy investment. OK, <laughs> so, you know, when you talk about putting all these things in, are we looking beyond the responsibility of the investor, the person that has engaged in the relationship? Because. Should we not have an idea of the investment as an investor before we invest? Oh, of that other person. So you're saying in in terms of what that other person is putting in, or I, I, you're saying in the terms like I'm I'm only talking about myself, me putting my time, and I'm not even considering the other person. Is that what we're saying? No. So what I'm saying, I'll use you and I as an example. So I meet okay. you, uh -huh. and I'm looking to invest in you. Me and you get into a relationship. Should I not know whether or not you are worth the investment before I start investing? Yeah, but that's when. But that's why it got, it's, it's called dating. Ah, so by the time we we're at the point where now I gotta let you go because uh, I've been holding on to this penny stock that ain't yielding any results. Then but you know what it is. But again, different. Every relationship is different. When you're dating, that's for, that's for you to decide if you want to buy whatever. It is right if you want to uh -huh. you know, invest in whatever it is and a lot of times things do start great and what it is a lot of people say when you meet someone you're meeting their representative right and True. then when you're living with them it's something else you might experience but uh -huh. people it's too much reason for re a relationship to end they could outgrow each other it's, it's so many different things could be cheating could be different things ah cheating is cheating a death sentence when it comes to relationship for people you think no not necessarily Mm. I, and and that has to do with the person. For me, I'm pretty cool. Maybe that's why I'm single. But <laughs> we're, all, we're all humans, right? And uh -huh. people, people are allowed to make mistakes. No one is perfect. But True. again, just because someone cheats, it has to have reasons behind it. Mm. You know, so some people could be just a habitual cheater. That's an issue, right? But yeah. something could have happened. It happened one time. And that same person who might have cheated once, could turn out to be the best partner in the mm. whole entire world because they have changed or they realize what they could lose. Mm. But again, it's two people in a relationship. So if someone takes someone back, it's like, say I take you back Finch because you were cheating on me for so long, right? I would never cheat on you, ever. Uh, yeah, because yeah, I don't <laughs> <see that for you. laughs> but ever. It's up to me to choose to forgive you, but then uh -huh. have certain thing, but I say I forgive you, but then every Saturday I break up. Remember that time you cheated on me in 2006? That's not good either. Yeah, yeah. What, what What's the most difficult thing for you? Because that's, I, I would say, was the one relationship that you just spoke about, is that was that the catalyst for your inspiration for writing that book? Or was it a, just a, a combination of uh, a host of a relationship that you may have had that's like, hey, you know what? I see a pattern in myself. I want to help other women learn how to let go of toxic situations so they can be better women. Wh which one was it for you? So it's it's a, a few different things. It's having friends going through relationships. So, mm. it's, you know, it's people around you as well as some of the things that I've been through. And when, when I do look back and see certain things, I was like, oh, hell. And I think my last re serious long-term relationship I was kind of exhausted and frustrated out of that because I'm like, you start a point finger, like, what am I doing wrong? It must be me, so forth and so on. So I think that that and a, a mixture of other things were like, were like I was like, oh, let me look at what it is happened in the past and what it is that I can do going forward. So a lot of people think this is like an angry book and I'm like, it has nothing to do with anger. It's actually about empowering us women that when we get out of something is how we can move forward. Oh, that's good. That's good. And, and, and you're right. You know, I think oftentimes when we hear about something someone's doing, we create, I was to say people create, they make assumptions. And when you make assumptions, you create storylines that's not true because it's just your assumption of a situation. So people might hear your title and think, oh, yeah, she's another one that's bashing uh, men. I didn't think that. I thought it was an empowering uh composition that was helping women to move forward because i mean we all know people i have sisters so you know i know about how it is they're stuck they're crying for weeks at a time because mm -hmm. of some dude and i'm i'm looking at the situation like 
hey, you should be happy right now. So I get it. I get it. I get it. Um, so, so for you, when, let's say, let's talk about your last relationship. Now, I don't know how long that relationship, how long ago that relationship uh, was. 2018, August 2nd. Oh, you have all the details. Okay. <laughs> it's it's still fresh. I'm an okay. open, open book. <laughs> oh, you open book. See, I say I'm a public library, so. <laughs> okay, that's too much. No, it ain't. Uh-uh. Some people just walking in, taking, throwing down books, and ripping off pages. I don't know. Hey, you know, that, that's, 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 the, that's the way I flow, you know. I, I'm just, I'm, I'm straight to the point. So, uh, when you when you look back on that breakup what was the first thing that you did that helped you move forward the first thing i did was um i stopped you know you didn't eat as much i was crying and saying oh why so forth and so on because that's one thing people some some women want to be extra strong no you need to cry and ball and <laughs> scream and don't bathe for a while watch some movies eat some ice cream you you need to let it out you know you can't <laughs> some people like to be like I don't need him. I'm glad we broke up. No, no, you're not. <laughs> you're not. <laughs> you know, you're trying to impress, and then you're lying and telling your friends, "Oh, girl, I, I'm." Da, 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 da. No, you, you know who you're trying to impress you because <laughs> you're going home to cry. <laughs> and you can tell the emotions involved when the hands start talking. You know? <laughs> <But all laughs> this the time they're doing this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an independent woman. I don't need him. I can pay my own bills. Oh, please. Yeah. Now, and do I you also, often? Uh huh. Go ahead. I say how people always say, like I always tell people, I don't need a man, but I want one. Ah, <laughs> big difference. Uh, do you often hear the question from people, why are you still single? Of course, because you're thinking five, five, brown eyes, caramel complexion, total perfection. That should be impossible. Now, I always tell people there's mm -hmm. a long line. I mean, there should be a long line. OK, but I get you know what it is as you grow and you develop yourself and you educate yourself and you understand yourself and you understand your worth. Oh, now I can definitely pick before I think a lot of the times the reason that I was single prior is and why I got into certain relationships is that I didn't value myself as much. I didn't find I was pretty, I didn't find I was smart enough. So I keep I kept attracting things that obviously you're attracting who you are mm -hmm. at that point in time, but. That come it's good and bad, I guess. So mm. as I said, double edged sword. So now I'm oh, I miss Francois, blah blah blah. But now people have their own perception of me. They think I'm high maintenance or she she too intimidating. But they wouldn't even take the time to have a conversation. They realize how amazing I am, right, Pinch? I I think you're amazing just in the short time I've <laughs> I've had the pleasure of encountering you. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna go out after this. I feel it. I feel it. It's in, it's in the atmosphere. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, 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 looking at this journey, uh, and it sounds to me unlike a host of people uh, who exit relationships. It sounds to me like you've done a lot of work within yourself so that you can be a better woman uh, for the next. I call it the next uh, Hall of Fame superstar that you choose. Ooh, you like nice. that, don't you? Yes, because <laughs> you 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 are a you are a Hall of Fame free agent. So uh, I always tell people it's not about us because we're we're great players when it comes to the game of relationships. But mm -hmm. the reason why we continue to be on that roller coaster is because we are horrible general managers. We don't know how to choose the right type of players for the championship caliber team that we desire. So that's what places us on that roller coaster of choosing the same types of people that we we find ourselves engaging with over and over and over again. And so, yeah, it sounds like you've done the work that allows you to move from just being a great, because, you know, Michael Jordan was a great player, but at first he was a horrible general manager. He could not put a <laughs> team together to save his life. Right. But now you look at how, how he's grown and the types of teams he's putting together over in Charlotte, and you're like, oh, okay, he's not the same general manager again. And I, I look at that as the same thing as it relates to relationship. Us as people have to become better general managers. Ooh, well said, Dr. Finch. Oh, I'm a doctor <laughs> now. Oh, okay. Does that increase my stock? <laughs> Your penny stock, right? <laughs> uh, uh, you, I don't have a penny stock. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I got a Wall Street portfolio. You know? <laughs> 
that's how valuable I am, Francois. <laughs> yeah. Um, I love your name. That does it. What does it mean? I have no clue. All I know it's French. No <laughs> clue. It just sounds pretty. Because people are like, oh my God, it's French. I said the only thing I know to say in French is we, oui, and that's it. <laughs> and it's my pretty last name. <laughs> that is hilarious. Now, now, how long have you been in the states? Twenty, going to be twenty-six years at the end of this month. That's kind, that's odd. So it's because you know most times when you find people who've been here for uh, an extended period of time, they tend to start picking up the accents of the natives around them. Why why do you think that hasn't happened with yeah, you? Let me tell you something, okay? I have no idea. My thing is, I've been like this since I could remember. I didn't know I was supposed to adjust and change my accent. It's only when people used to tell me, "How long have you been here?" and I'm like, 20 years." They're like, "Why you talk like that?" I'm like. <laughs> like I don't know. I didn't mean to talk like this, but I guess I never put much thought into it because my brother, he's been here six years. In the first year, he was hardcore American. Okay. And I'm like, what the hell am I doing wrong? But I think my accent at the end of the day makes me extra special. So in the, in the, I actually used to get a little frustrated because I'm part of like something called Toastmasters. If you ever heard of Toastmasters, where you have to do public speeches and stuff like that. So uh -huh. I was always extra conscious of my accent. I never used to like to speak because I thought my accent made me sound like I wasn't smart mm -hmm. until, I, you know, again, you grow and stuff. And I realized that's what makes me extra special. That's what makes you extra special. You don't think it's the radiant smile? It's a number of things. It's just a whole list. You, you, how long we have? Five hours? Because we wouldn't be able to finish talk about all the things that makes me amazing. We have as long as you need. <laughs> I see you use your voice all the time. <laughs> I thought that was fitting. We have as long as you need. You know? <laughs> that way you may, you know I meant business, okay? I love it. Because <laughs> you know when I when you start giving them that Billy D or that Denzel, they know you mean business. See how I'm looking at you right now? You see how I'm looking at you right now? And you do the eye thing, you kind of squint uh, a little. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's just so you Barry, know. Some Barry White kind of thing. A little, yeah. You got to take yeah. it down a couple octaves, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So you understand, you know? Oh. <laughs> you ain't finna flirt with me all day, okay? And leave me on read when I text you. No, ma'am. <laughs> Uh, all right, so who inspired you the most and why? Ooh, ooh, just one person done it. Okay, <laughs> so it would be you can give us a couple people if it's a couple. Okay, people. so Oprah Winfrey. Okay, and I'm, I, I'm not gonna go into a whole thing, just saying her name, you get it right for all the things she has accomplished and where she's been, what she, where, what she has done, and what she continues to do. That's mm. it in a nutshell. It has someone called Tara Ray Trent. That's uh. I, I always tell people just google her she was actually on the oprah winfrey show she was one of those people in africa that had the the terrible life and being married off at 13 not being allowed to go to school wrote mm -hmm. all her goals put it on the, like buried it in the ground so forth and so on and i'm shortening the story but years later she was able to accomplish all the things and more that she wrote down and buried under a tree in uh, africa which typically you would the stuff that she wrote she would never be able to accomplish but she did so i think that was amazing and i love michael jackson like crazy i don't care what no one has to say that's not my issue Focus. Ah. okay so i love michael jackson just because it's just like part of the whole, Oprah whole thing all the things he was able to accomplish but it's just his kindness the the, the love mm. the it's just who he was and he didn't make no apology for who he was or who he believed himself to be so those are my three people okay i didn't see my mom and dad they're good or whatever i love my parents but they basically just did the spoon and egg thing and they did they did amazing they did an amazing job okay <laughs> now 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 in your travels because i i did read about you being a uh a speaker um what what is one of the things you found on the circuit of speaking, on the stages of speaking that electrifies you to keep getting up on that stage? So one of the things with me, since I'm, I did a lot of Toastmasters, so forth and so on, I think the thing is just watching 
be well, a lot of times when, whenever speeches that i do i interact with my audience mm -hmm. so i just like the reaction because I, I made a uh, extra i i point out people i engage them i'm having them in the conversation even if it's a speech they're definitely in it i'm talking to them so their reaction and the fact that i can make people laugh make people mm -hmm. pause and think because a lot of time when people are doing speeches i know for a fact i'm a sleeper so if you do <laughs> In the first five seconds, if you can't engage me, I am napping. Okay. Right. So I like to be able to engage people and just see people light up. And people, after I come off that stage, the excitement, people can't wait to talk to you. They just want to touch you or just ask you a question. It, it's fun. And I think you make such a connection with some people. You, you let the people touch you when you come off stage? Well, if there's, according to who it is, if he's really cute, yes, he can, can do a little. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. All right. So you have five steps that you give people to help them get over a breakup. What's step number one? The first of all, it's five plus step. Okay. So I know. Oh, it's okay. Five I, I, I didn't know right. if the plus was a, was a uh, typo error that they gave me. So I just, you know, I just said five steps. Okay. So let's talk about the five plus steps that you give people to get over a breakup. What's the plus step number one? Okay, so I I named it however I choose to name it. So it's called Clean House. And people always go, Clean House. I'm like, yes. Are you not tired of smelling his drawers and wow. smelling his side of the bed and looking at all the pictures and all the keepsakes and the sentimental stuff? So, yes, you should clean your house. Hopefully you're not dirty. But at the same time, you need to detach from some of these, you know, tangible things that keep us reminding us about John and what John did. Mm. And when we went, to, you know, to the party and he hold my hand and the napkin. So it's clean house. You kind of have to detach from some, some of those things. And some of these things, you're going to actually have to burn them. Some of them going to have to throw it out. Some of them going to have to sell them. Sell them because I sold some of my stuff and I made some money. <laughs> okay. So you want, want them to clean house. Um, oh, I mean, I think that's a, that's a great idea because so many times we have memorabilia of the ex and we're wondering why it's difficult for us to continuously move to, to move on. And it's because of those things. And I don't, I don't even know why. I don't think people are honest with themselves about why they keep that kind of stuff, especially pictures. Yeah. And yeah. then every so often you look through and you go through the, uh, it's, that, that's not good. It's, 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 it's right. And it's harder for you to heal. You're definitely not going to go forward. So that's something everyone, everyone needs to do. Okay. So we're not breaking up. You're going to build a mausoleum for me. Okay. <laughs> Honestly, I think you might have two for me. So <laughs> two. Okay. All right. What's uh, plus step number two? Church. <laughs> Now, all the atheists is like, what? Church? I ain't going to no church. I don't believe in God. I believe in the, the universe. I believe in the spirits or whatever. The whole point of that is you need to just take a pause. And church could be many different things with different people. Mm -hmm. So whatever that is for you, if it's some meditation, if it's some breathing exercises, if it's some yoga, you need to pause. You need some quiet time. For me, it's church. I need to grab that Bible, cry on it, scream out to God, oh, Lord, why, Jesus? <laughs> so whatever it is for you, you need some alone time to just pause, refocus. Okay. I like that one. What's number three? Link up with friends. No. You know, all you got to say, well, yeah, I need to put on that fuck him dress and go fuck <laughs> and find me. A... No. Okay. Not that. Okay. <laughs> I would say it's link up with the right friends. Like, I don't even like the term friends. I have confidence. I say wow. friends sleep with your man, right? Confidence mm. is like the next level. You could just close your eye. This person could lead you and you could trust a thousand percent. You have, a lot of us have a bunch of friends. You can't trust them because they might be sleeping with your man, trying to take your job, trying to steal your money. Because okay. uh, every these days, everybody's your BFF. I hate that. But you need some confidence, the right people. Some people that are just going to listen mm. and not say, I told you so, and girl, mm. I knew. No. So mm. find the right friends and the right people to listen to you. Okay? So link up with the right people. Now, when you say friends in that term, you're mm -hmm. not saying to someone, because we want, you know, in this day and age, you got to be clear with people, because people hear what they, you say one thing and they hear something completely different. I was like, oh, she told me get with some friends. I got these dudes over here that I call my friends, but 
you know, it's like you don't fuck your friends, ladies and gentlemen. So if you <laughs> if you slept with them, they are not your friend, okay? <laughs> so I always say it have different different friends. Like we can have a bunch of friends, but uh -huh. they all belong in a certain category. So you have the friends, hey, I like to smoke weed and drink. So you have that particular friend that you meet up with once every two months, because unless you want to really get high and drunk all the time. Then so you, then you have friends who like personal development. Uh, for me, that's the person I want to talk to every day because they're taking me on the next level. I get into grow, I get into learn, I get into mm -hmm. move forward in my life. So just know which category of friends you need to be hanging out. That's why I said I don't like the term friends. Okay. The, in this serious thing, this is a life changing moment for you, right? You're not with this person that you love, that this person you thought you were going to marry and have kids with and have that white picket fence. So you need that special person that's just going to listen to you scream, talk, talk for 10 hours eat ice cream with you and just be there for you mm -hmm. that's why i said with the right friends with the right friends all right what's the next step not finch anybody else but finch <laughs> wait a fine. minute wait a minute why not finch <laughs> you look like trouble <laughs> i am trouble i'm glad you can see it okay <laughs> you can't you have no idea the type of trouble i am <laughs> exactly no i, I kind of have an idea <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I, something something tells me a few of your exes might need to get this book, but it's okay. It's all good. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna plead the fifth, Your Honor. Yes, I am. <laughs> all right. What's the next step? Okay. The fourth one is passion project. And what I find is a lot of time when we women, you know, with the emotional caregivers, the caretakers, mm -hmm. support, and so on. We get involved with someone, we forget everything we were doing. We forget our goals, we yeah. forget friends, we forget your parents, you forget everything because everything we focus on, oh, I love him, oh my God, what are we gonna do? What I'm gonna cook for him? What Are we helping him on his goals? And we forget about ourselves. Yeah. So it's more like a refocus and remind yourself what it is that you love doing. Find out, remind yourself what your gifts were because you even put your gifts to the side, you mm -hmm. know, and get back into some of those things, refocus, because this whole thing is about refocusing on yourself. Yeah. you know so i'm moving forward so get that passion project re revive it and do you do enjoy you. life okay yeah. now uh, before we go to your, your your next tip i have to ask this why do you think so many people and in in a lot of cases because it's not it's not just uh, women or you know whatnot but why do you think people lose themselves in in relationships not understanding that who they are is what makes the foundation of that relationship uh, flourish and grow. How, why do you think people lose themselves in relationships? Okay, I I think again speaking from my experience or some of my friends or whatever the case might be. Mm -hmm. You know, how long you're looking for a man, you finally find a man. You're like, who? <laughs> I'm holding on to this, and then you're looking at all the things you could do to keep that man. You forget everything else because your focus is I finally have a man. I don't have to hang out with Sharon and Linda and talk about all, all kind of crap I don't care about. I want to hold on to this man. So anything I need to do to make sure this man stay in my life, I got to do it. So the man first, I after. I've been there, done that. <laughs> Will you go there again? Never. Never! <laughs> <laughs> well, what can a man expect with you this next go round? Like, what, what, is, what do you think is going to be one of his challenges when it comes to you? My mouth. I say exactly what I'm thinking. <laughs> ah, now why is that? Why is that such a bad thing? Because not everybody could handle this. Like I'm very sarcastic, and sometimes it could be it could come off, and it could be kind of disrespectful. Mm -hmm. So you would have to honestly get to know me and understand my sense of humor, because you could have get offended. So not everybody, you know, could deal deal with that. So once he gets to know me, and again, some people might not never be able to deal with it. So you're not the person for me. Hmm. Now you don't strike me as the type of the type of woman who would choose a man who would have a problem with your mouth in any aspect. Well, first of all, he's supposed to be looking for me, but um, I... <laughs> <laughs> what? The man's supposed to be looking for me, but who yeah, told no, you that? He... Who told you he's supposed to be looking for you? Look, when I ha I went on my knees and I prayed, God tell me, don't worry, hmm. girl, he coming. He said, God, just keep doing what you're doing. I told you that. What I told you that? <laughs> So he's supposed to be, he coming and then then it, it's just going to happen because I think a lot of times and I I am very guilty at this. Mm -hmm. As soon as a man passed by, 
even if he could just smell like a man you're like oh my god i wonder what the kid's gonna look like i wonder where we're gonna live like we start to plan the whole future and the man didn't even say hello so sometimes we need to honestly stop looking you know yeah. <laughs> and he, he gonna come just keep doing what you're doing love what you're doing and that energy is definitely gonna go out there. So I just waiting for he gonna come and knock on my door anytime now with my UPS package. Anytime now. Okay, UPS guy. Okay. Uh <laughs> yeah, but uh, with benefits. <laughs> this this woman, Kai Nicole, I don't know if you've heard of her. She wrote this book called Date Like a Woman. And she talks about that aspect about uh women to stop husband shopping when they meet men and, and just really repurpose uh reshift their focus on just enjoying the moments and dating versus husband shopping you agree with that i agree a thousand percent because yeah. again i've been there and your mind <laughs> i think we, we just go into a whole other world instead of just be like she said be just be present if you're having mm -hmm. a conversation with a guy just have a conversation yeah. instead of in the back of their mind like oh my god i like his hands oh my god my child gonna have a knife that's mm -hmm. how my child knows gonna look my child gonna be like six feet like mm -hmm. we, we we start to think too much in the future so just honestly enjoy the moment because you might be thinking all these things and then he's a two days later you realize he's not about much you right. wasted all of that time and thought yeah yeah I i'm six feet just fyi just six mm. yeah. negative what negative what six what I, I'm actually six six feet. Yeah, yeah. Just I don't just, understand how you're tall. Each time you're <laughs> just, uh, just I'm, I'm six feet. Just I'm, so you I'm know six it. feet. Just so you know. <laughs> yeah. well, well, thank you. I'm five five. <laughs> oh, did you five five thick in the thighs? Okay. <laughs> All of that. <laughs> Are you really five five? Yeah, I told you five five. Wrong eyes and caramel complexion. Okay, that works for you. The caramel complexion. Thank you. Everything works. It's a very well put together package. Everything God knows what he was doing when he created all of this. Okay. All of that. Okay. <laughs> all right. So your final step on how to get over a breakup is what? I said volunteer. Stop focusing on yourself all the time. Mm. Because again, even in the beginning of the book, I don't just immediately start with the steps. You know, I go through, you know, taking responsibility, blah, blah, blah. But sometimes we so so, you know how people just want to tell the story over mm -hmm. and over, hoping someone would hear, and most of the people don't care, and this God is not them anyway. Right. That's like totally what Les Brown always says. Mm -hmm. So sometimes just redirect that all that energy when you could be helping someone, and it could be it don't have to. People always think when you help someone, it's always money. Just volunteer your time, do something. It's, you know, just so much to do, so much other people in need, and when you honestly start to help other people, you realize how great your life is. <laughs> that part, that part. I truly love these steps that you're giving because they're not things I've heard before. Oftentimes when people are giving out relationship advice, it's the same old, same old stuff that we've heard and read over and over again. I like the way you think because your your tips and the, the steps that you're giving people, uh, it, it causes them to think. I commend you on that. Oh, thank you. Oh, I feel so sweet. It's like a book and a journal at one. So mm -hmm. you'll be having exercises to the, you. It does make you think. So you're going to have time to write and, and get all those feelings out and, you know, really search yourself. Yeah. Now here, we're getting to my favorite part of when they brought me to you and asked about whether or not I would want to have you on this show. And I was saying, hey, OK, who what's she talking about? Because I'm big. <laughs> I, I'm really big on the subject matter and when they said relationships okay you got my interest let's go deeper and i remember them bringing up you talking about or you having five uh five other tips about what destroys a relationship and i was like i want to talk to her about that uh because <laughs> you know i think so so many times we are invested most times it's just like with marriage people always only looking at the wedding but they're not looking at the marriage aspect and i think it's the same thing with relationships people are looking at what can he do for me what can she do for me but they're not looking at the things that they may encompass or or bring into the relationship that may destroy it so i was like i definitely got to hear about these five things that destroy a relationship so are you ready to talk about that friends you know it, it should just be the things that destroyed my relationship <laughs> Lord. 
<laughs> you you gotta go broader than what destroyed your relationship. <laughs> No, but these are definitely things, again, all these things is from part experience and definitely, again, you have a bunch of girlfriends and all yeah. the stuff you listen to or whatever. So I'm sure these things will be somewhat helpful to somebody. Okay. Let's right? go. Number so, okay. one. So the number one that everyone should know is communication, right? But this uh, is what I always say about communication. We all communicate all the time with everybody. But is it good communication? It could be me and you talking, talking, one not listening. It could be me and you talking, talking, I trying to talk over you. So it has to be good communication. Mm. Someone has to pause and listen, try to understand what the other person and where they're coming from. But ain't nobody trying to do that. Try talking to me, okay? I talk over people all the time. I'm good at it. You don't say. <laughs> so that's something I definitely know I have to and I continue to work on is communicating. Because as soon as the Prince says something, I'm like, I'm not even listening. I'm ready to answer. What? That's not what I meant. You obviously did not listen. So great, good communication. Ah. Now, now, now when you say, because I'm always on people about when they say they're working on stuff, what specifically are you doing to work on not talking over people? What are you, what exactly are you doing? So that's the other thing which kind of brings me somewhat into the other st thing that I do is honestly pausing. Sometimes if you just pause and i even learned that when i do toastmasters in speaking because mm -hmm. we tend to use filler words like ah uh, um because we, we all we need to do sometimes is just pause right. and when i say it seeps into the other thing is to have more patience all you need to do is pause for two seconds even if you need to take a breath it believe me it does wonders it stops mm -hmm. you from saying the first stupid thought that might come in your he head and then you regret saying it and then mm -hmm. you can't take it back even if you apologize so pause, believe me, I've been pausing a lot because some people I want to cross out and to get them peace of my mind. But I pause and I that's why I said my other point is having more patience. And when you listen, sometimes you fully hear what the person has to say. You actually like, thank God I listen because that's not what I thought he was going to say. Because like you said in the beginning, we like to assume a bunch of things. We make up our own story, get angry, and the person is not even thinking anything like yeah. that. Yeah. Now y'all, y'all, y'all have to pay close attention. Did y'all see how she lowered her voice, spoke a little softer, gazed into the camera as she spoke, batted a little eye or two, and gave you all that fabulousness? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love patience. Okay, you got to pause with your patience. Okay. What? So I'm taking my own advice, right? You are. I love it. All right. What's the next one? Okay, so that one was basically communication and having patience, right? The the third one that people, I think they're now getting into it, is having a third party. Okay, calm down. You're, you're nasty. You're nasty. So, really? <laughs> About time. That's what somebody's saying. <laughs> About time. <laughs> it ain't even my birthday, okay? <laughs> it, has to, <laughs> it has to be therapy or counseling right uh -huh. people don't realize how important that is you need a mediator someone that totally can listen to two parties that not not your mother or <laughs> your sister who's gonna side with you all the time i always love when people say my mom said your, your mom most likely not even in a relationship now so please so it's just to definitely seek out some counseling even before you even go into something like a relationship or marriage mm -hmm. and even while you're in it it's it's always just having that third party in there to just bring that balance to mm -hmm. me it's it's very helpful that's good See, man you got some good stuff i mean some good course i mean some good tips <laughs> <laughs> i want to make sure i clear that up right now okay <laughs> you got some good steps tips, okay <laughs> Oh, and, and and this one is basically what I have mentioned before. Stop asking your wrong friends, right? <laughs> so so this is my thing. I, oh, it's always amazing when we female have an issue, then we call Sharon, right? Sharon can't keep a man. Sharon's sleeping with somebody else's husband, but you're calling Sharon Ooh. for information. <laughs> It, but it's always amazing to me. Like some people try to ask me for relationship advice. I said, okay, I'm good at getting over breakups. I ne breakups. I never said I'm good at keeping a man. So you can't come and ask me no advice. 
You know what I'm saying? Or even so, if you're asking someone advice, like I have a friend, he's been with his significant other for 20 years. Mm-hmm. Ask someone like that. Don't ask someone who changes um changes a, a man ever, like they change their underwear. Like think for a second. You know, but again, some people always just rush to just want to tell their side of story. So they just tell anyone, take the advice and then make things worse in their relationship. That's true. That's true. When, when you're seeking advice from people outside of the relationship, you got to make sure you're talking to somebody who's going to give you truthful advice and hold you accountable for the things that you are, are, you know, are wrong about as well. Because I think sometimes people want yes men and yes women because they just want to be right. They don't care about yeah. what's right. They just, they want to be right. Yeah. Yeah. Cause they want to say, I know that. And Janet told me that you need to really, and Janet home with she man, <laughs> not taking your advice and you fighting with your husband. <laughs> and, and, uh, yeah. Janet's at home with her man getting that special kind of loving and exactly. you at home arguing <laughs> with your man and you ain't getting nothing. Yeah. That part. <laughs> And the last thing I oh, it always amazed me, right? Because yeah. women always the first thing in order to I don't know how they think this really helps anything, but the withholding of sex. <laughs> I'm like one time Steve Harvey had said because some people have an issue with Steve Harvey. I do love my Steve Harvey. I always say one size don't fit all. Some things you could take from his book. Some things right. you may not be able to take. That's up to you. But the what is really the purpose of withholding sex? Who are you necessarily really hurting? Because mm-hmm. at the end of the day, okay, so he doesn't get sex, but you're still miserable. Yeah. You're still fighting. It, it 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 just doesn't make sense. And I remember Steve Harvey said the most you should withhold sex is 24 hours. Otherwise, you're asking for problems. Now, I didn't say he's going to necessarily cheat, but you ain't helping the situation. Now, you're giving him a reason to start to look somewhere else. Mm. You know, so it's better you come back to the good communication, try to solve these issues instead of holding. You know, I ain't going to lie. We women, we hold on to things. We walk around, we stump, we mumble a bunch of stuff. One week, and we could hold stuff. One week later, mm. it's still, mm. <laughs> you know, and it's a relationship. It's two people. You know, you love each other. You all say vows if you're married. And it's mm-hmm. amazing you say the vows and then forget it the next day. And that's why all these things kind of work together, the counseling, the communication, the patience. So you don't have to get to that point where you're like, you ain't getting no cookie. <laughs> you ain't getting no sausage either. Yeah, yeah I don't like sausage, yeah. And it's according to what is turkey is bacon. It's according to what kind of sausage it is, but yeah. Turkey bacon? That ain't the same thing. <laughs> maybe maybe that's the problem I have all this time. I've been getting the wrong thing. Damn it! That's your problem. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> you shopping in the wrong deli, okay? <laughs> all right. All right. Uh, those those are all great tips. Um, if people want to grab your book, where can they get it from? Definitely on Amazon, where you can find everything else. And I always tell people it's easier. Just put in my name, Miss. That's M-S-S for multi-talented and super sexy. So don't go looking for MRS, okay? Jesus, Lord have mercy. People keep think I can't spell, I could spell. So it's Miss Francois. Once you pop that in, the book definitely would come up. Ba-da. Like that, just pop, 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 pop. <laughs> <laughs> ah, you are full of surprises, okay? <laughs> All right, and if people want to connect with you online, how can they do so? So I always direct people to my website because that's the easiest thing. But but any, I'm on all social media pa- platforms and it's MSS underscore Francois if you're looking at me from the Facebook to the TikTok to the Instagram. But I always tell people if you go to www.missfrancois.com, you get everything right there. One stop shop. Spread the word by leaving a rating and review on iTunes. Thanks for joining us where it always feels good.